Hi friends, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing my August book haul and it has turned into a rather massive one. So I've got a load of NetGalley arcs that I've been approved for that I didn't get a chance to do a video for in July. So some of those have carried over and also some of the things that I've been approved for August. So I think to start off, I'm just going to show you guys through like um, recording my screen what I've got um, on there. I'm not going to be going too much into depth, um, but you can have a little look at the titles. Um, and tell me what I should prioritise. I mean, obviously I should prioritise all of them because they're arcs. But, you know, I get very um, request happy. But I do always eventually read them and leave my reviews and everything like that. So let's check those books out. quite a lot tend to get quite a mixture of genres which is um, something I tend to do on NetGalley because I feel like I'm not risking like money or anything like that if I don't like the book and I feel like you know being honest it's helpful isn't it um, and it's that low cost risk to myself so yes on to all the physical books. So, so just this random one I thought was really cute. I was um, helping clean my grandparents' house the other day and I stumbled on this book, which is actually my mum's. It's got her name and everything inside. And I have always been obsessed with miniatures and dolls' houses. I had so many dolls' houses, unfortunately, I had to kind of abandon when I left my family home. Um, and I didn't know that my mum was super into them too, but this was her like dolls' house as a, a book sorry as a child and it's queen mary's doll's house and dolls belonging to her majesty the queen um and it just i had a little flick for it it's just got some information and some little um pictures of the dolls houses and it's just so cute and just and it makes me remember a time when um there was this like little village that we went to this little craft area and they had a doll's house shop as well and Oh, it was just so sweet. I think I remember her saying, because I used to be like proper into them, like actively working on them and stuff. And we used to go to Hobbycraft and get some doll's house bits. And yeah, I just, I think that's a memory that I sort of forgot. Um, that just made me feel happy seeing that. Next section really is book to door books. I got a load on there. I was really, I, I mean, I've bought from there quite a few times. You guys have seen me talk about them a lot. But um, I recently saw, I've been catching up on Jodie's videos, and I recently saw her do a video, and she was talking mainly about the um, books, like the art and book versions of Studio Ghibli movies. And as you guys know, I've been really into reading Diana Wine Jones's books, which did, which is um, House Movie Castle, um, or she's the author of that, that movie book. And I wanted to see some of the books that she was talking about and some of the really nice art books. They were all sold out, but I got some good things. Anyway, keeping on the Diana Wan Jones bandwagon, I wanted to pick up Charmed Life um, so I can start off with another series. I think this, is this possibly? Yeah, this is the first book in the Crestomancy series. I've collected a handful of them from Vinted, but they're all like random books within the, within the series. Um, but this is the first one, so I can start it as soon as really. No witchcraft, Gwendolyn Chant, a gifted witch in the making, has other ideas and is determined to get the better of the great enchanter. Her brother Cat, who has no magical gift, is powerless to stop her. That's so random. The bit before it says, there's one absolute rule, said Crestomancy. No witchcraft of any kind is to be practiced by children without supervision. Is that understood? Okay, that makes sense now. I should have probably read that part first. But yeah, I absolutely adore these illustrated um, covers. I think, I really hope they've got illustrated chapter headings because i liked that in the first two books ah oh, yes i love it it's really cute it kind of gives me like chris riddell 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 vibes um oh and it's written it's got like a special instruction by neil gaiman which is awesome because them two often go hand in hand in like collaborations and stuff so yeah charmed life which is the first book in the crestomancy series oh essential modern classics nice i like that and then the next stack are Studio Ghibli-esque 
books because I also did a book versus movie review talking about House Movie Castle, differences and enjoyment level and kind of which did it better between the movie and the book. And I sort of want to do that for some more Studio Ghibli um, productions. So I picked up when Marnie was there. This was originally by Joan G. Robinson and I remember watching the movie and I kind of put it off for ages because I thought it was going to be really sad and it was, it kind of made me cry. Um, so this one says, um, sent away from her foster home one long hot summer to a sleepy Norfolk village by the sea, Anna dreams her days away among the sandhills and the marshes. She never expected to meet a friend like Marnie, someone who doesn't judge Anna for being ordinary and not even trying. But no sooner has Anna learned the loveliness of friendship than Marnie vanishes. This is such a beautiful story. I really hope I fully enjoy the um, book as well. And it's also got some nice chapter. Uh, illustrations too and this is another beautiful beautiful cover it carries around to the back too fabulous and then I picked up Kiki's delivery service by Aiko or Aiko Kodono um, and this one is another favorite another great film so witch in training Kiki and her cat Gigi are determined to find their own way in the world Kiki isn't great at spells so she sets up her own magical flying delivery service using her broomstick to deliver all over their new town but there's always seems to be trouble in the air this is so freaking cute oh how adorable and this is a really nice edition as well they've got lovely editions and because it's on book to doors they've got all this for such an affordable price like honestly so cool love it chapter headings i live for that stuff okay and i think this is the last um studio ghibli related book um and i believe this wasn't a book to begin with i think this is just the book of the movie um and this is my neighbor totoro which was oh such a good film one of my favorites i think it's one of the first ones that i've seen um and this is the novel it just says original story and art by Hayao miyazaki novel by Sugiko Kubo. It says it's now a novel, so I'm assuming, you know, they've got an author to write the novelisation of it. So, 11-year-old Satsuki and her sassy little sister May have moved to the country to be closer to their alien mother. Soon, in the woods behind this spooky old house, Satsuki and May discover a forest spirit named Totoro. When May goes missing, it's up to Satsuki to find her sister and she'll need help from some new and magical friends. Oh, I'm so excited to read these. So probably look out again for some more reading vlogs, um, book versus movie reviews and such. So we'll have a ball of a time. Is that even a saying? I don't know. And then in the box over here that I've left in here, I'm so excited. I got some Rick Riordan graphic novels. I've been wanting to get the graphic novel editions of books that I, well, but of his books for ages. So I picked up a couple. So I was gonna, I was going to get the Percy Jackson ones, but they were all individual, so so I preferred to wait if I see them as a bundle. Like this one, and this is the Cain Chronicles trilogy, and it's his Egyptian mythology trilogy, following the the Cain, the Cain siblings. Um, yeah, this is great. I really enjoyed the books, so I read, I read them years and years ago, though, so it'd be cool to revisit them in a different kind of media. Um, yeah, looking forward to that. Okay, and I picked up another bundle. So this is just like a witch bundle and it comes with The Green Witch, your complete guide to natural magic um, of herbs, flowers, essential oils and more by Aaron Murphy Hiscock. His his and then there's also The Witch's Book of Self-Care um, by, again, Aaron Murphy Hiscock. So yeah, they're just kind of some non-fiction books that were bound together. And then the last books that I got from there is, I now know these are called the Deluxe Editions and it's back to Rick Riordan again. And it's the Magnus Chase series. I'm so excited to have these because I thought these were just like solely the American editions. Um, and so I thought I'd have to go through Amazon. That, that was my easy fix. I ordered from Amazon to make sure I was getting the right covers, um, but from the American version and just putting my address here. Um, but now I know they're called the Deluxe Edition. Hopefully they'll be able to I'll be able to find them a bit easier because I've been collecting the Apollo books in this set. I think they look much nicer than the generic UK editions of his books. So yeah, it's Magnus Chase following um, Norse mythology and I haven't 
yet read this series but I really enjoy Rick Riordan as you can probably tell so those are those books I'm probably just going to charge up my um, camera for a little bit and then I'll return okay I am back let me just adjust you ever so slightly I am going to jump on to the Waterstones book now so I on Monday I went to Waterstones and got two sets of these books two bags the next day I went to Waterstones and got another bag and used my points and then today I went and got what did I get it might not have been Monday because today's only Tuesday I went to Bernardo's and um, got some books in there so let's start with the first Waterstones bag which is in here they're only got split across two because um, some of them are hard bags and such and it might have ripped through I think it was a rainier day so um first book I've got here I probably should have looked more into this because I'm not as super excited as I thought I would be but I mean it's still kind of cute but this was in the south section and it's almost midnight by Rainbow Rowell um illustrated by Simini Blocker this is two festive short stories and it contains midnight and kindred spirits I've read kindred spirits because I believe it was a um world book day one pound book yeah but I've not read it in this format so it's got some illustrations and just a cute afternoon read I think um and it's a nice cover to be fair it's like sparkly and pretty okay I also picked up Kill the Black One First a memoir of hope and justice by Michael Fuller and I had on my Amazon wish list for a while I think for a while and I saw it in the shop today and I just wanted to grab it. Um, it's a story about race, identity, belonging and displacement. It's the memoir um, from Michael Fuller who was Britain's first ever black chief constable whose childhood in care and career in policing is not only a stark representation of race relations in the UK but also a unique morality tale of how humanity deals with life's unfairness. Hoping to tackle injustice and create change from within, Michael joined the police force. There he experienced racism and inequality colleagues shouting racist insults to the Brixton riots where kill the black one first was yelled from the crowds how disgusting is that determined despite everything not to turn and walk away he rose to the ranks and made his way to the very top this sounds phenomenal um it I think I was interested in picking this one up after I read Black Klansman um which was an awesome book as well that was also an autobiography um from a police officer um, when they, but they infiltrated the, the KKK um, so I was looking for things similar in that regard I don't think um, like he doesn't do a crazy stunt to infiltrate any like uh, <laughs> supremist racist cult situation but there is a lot in here that I think would be very interesting to read so this one I, this was just a whim I think I'd seen the cover but I hadn't necessarily heard anything specific about it but this is called the virgo book of witches edited by i don't know how to pronounce this first name sharuka hussein i think and i picked it up really because i like the cover it's got virgo in it i'm a virgo and it's got witches and it looks really cute and it says the witch resilient edgy awe inspiring and potent she never disappears for long so it is um i think it's a collection of short stories you know Alluring women and alien knights, enchantresses and seekers of revenge, wise old women and badly behaved girls. Over 50 stories of crones and nixes, shapeshifters and beauties, including the loving fox witch of Japan, Italy's witch bee witch, Scotland's good wife of Lagan, Biddy Earl and the terrifying Kale. Then there is Baba Yaga who comes in many forms down through the ages to haunt, entice, possess, transform and challenge. Every corner of the globe bequeaths us folklore and legends about women who step out of line and become banshees, a howling night witch and harbour of death, she-devils, Lilith and her daughters, or bitches, Hecate, whose chariot is drawn by dogs, beware the witch. It's a celebration of anger, tomfoolery, fun, strife and victory, because the witch never really disappears. This sounds amazing um nothing too crazy i thought it was gonna have a really cool like naked hardcover but that's cool it's fine the dust jacket's pretty in itself so yeah that'd be fun to kind of dip into and out to i love folklore i love like learning about witchcraft and the occult um so hopefully this should be a lot of fun too you get you're getting to see um different regions and cultures sort of myths and legends about witchcraft okay so in the second waterstones bag I have two hardback books. So, 
I did a thing. This author disappointed me when I read her books at the end of the year and the beginning of this year. And they were The Testament of Loki and The Gospel of Loki. Switch around, The Gospel of Loki, Testament of Loki. I think The Gospel's first. And that's Joanne Harris's, Joanne M. Harris's books. And I thought, you know what, I'm not gonna bother really pick up anything else. I know this is just the same series and it might have changed, but I thought, well, it's one of her newer works, what well, more later works, so it would be more of a representation of how she writes now. So I was like, ah, it's not for me. And anyway, I saw this and I honestly, I fell in love with the cover and then I read a little bit about it and I was like, oh, this sounds like something I'd enjoy. But then I thought that with the Loki books and I was disappointed. So I bought it anyway. <laughs> and then if this doesn't work out for me, that's it. That's no more for me for Joanne M. Harris. Um, and this is Honeycomb. It says, there is a story the bees used to tell. And it's illustrated by Charles Bess. And it's just this beautiful, it's like a cloth bound naked hardcover and it's just I was really reeled in by the cover so she got me there um I already said I wasn't going to buy anything from her or read anything else from her and here I am um but this just looks absolutely beautiful I just want to show you like the illustrations how stunning so it says here um long ago far away far away and long ago the world was honeycomb we know the worlds were honeycomb Rich, dark and opulent, cocooned in silken shadows, this is a novel unlike any other. A honeycomb built from a hundred cells, where each cell is a story in its own right. Follow the lacewing king, trickster and ruler of the silken folk, on his misadventures through the many worlds, pursued with both the vengeful spider queen and the deadly harley quinn. On his travels through the undersea, the river dream and even the kingdom of death itself, he encounters a multitude of characters, a watchmaker's boy, a huntress with a mechanical tiger, the princess who dreams of library my stick um but none more magical than the bees the little builders of honeycomb spinning their nectar into stories this actually sounds really beautiful i hope i love it i really do it almost feels like little folk tales and fairy tales and oh my god the illustrations it looks like a lot of work went into this so i hope 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 i adore this and then this one, I feel like I might have seen the cover, but I haven't had any reviews that I know of. Um, I haven't heard anything about it, to be honest. And that's called The Absolute Book Absolute Book by Elizabeth Knox. Um, and this is a signed copy as well, actually. So let's see where it's been signed. There we go. Fabulous. Uh, it's got some nice end pages. Let's see how it looks underneath. Ah, just plain, but still. Oh, I just smacked myself in the face. Um, so on the inside flap, it has this written there. It says, Taryn Cornick can barely remember the library in her old family home. Since her sister was murdered, she for she's forgotten so much. Cat's been a bit daring. What are you doing on there? You're gonna hurt yourself. Now it's all coming back. The fire, the thief, the scroll box. People are asking questions about the library questions that might relate to her sister's death and something called the absolute book a book in which secrets are written and which everyone believes only she can find that kind of gives me um the binding they insist her and be the hunter but she knows the truth she is the hunted it's a tale of sisters ancient blood a forgotten library murder revenge and a book that might just have the answer to everything so that sounded really awesome and for some reason i have vibes that it might be like literary in style like beautiful lyrical writing um and i'm just hoping that's the case because that sounds awesome what are you doing up there See, look at her it's just like the king of the castle Okay, so <laughs> the third and final Waterstones bag, and then we'll go on to charity shop stuff. I got another load of books, as I mentioned, I spent some points on it. Probably the points that I built up with those books, to be fair. I've been interested to pick up, so I've got two paperbacks and two hardcovers. Um, the first one here on my pile is Mina and the Undead uh, by Amy McCaw. I think, I feel like she does movie and book reviews on youtube i feel like i'm subscribed to her if it's the same person that's in my head but also jody has read and enjoyed this and i take her reviews quite seriously like i really enjoy it what she um what she puts out and it's just it's amazing like oh, i love it oh that smells amazing i love it when pages have like a little bit of extra detail and stuff on them 
it sounded so much fun so it says new orleans fang fest 1995 mina's having a summer to die for mina arrives in new orleans to visit her strange sister libby she lives she loves nothing more than a creepy horror movie and can't wait to explore the city's darkest secrets vampire tours seedy bars spooky cemeteries disturbing local myths mina lands a part-time job at a horror movie mansion and meets jared libby's gorgeous housemate fellow horror, horror enthusiast, but the perfect summer bliss is broken when she stumbles upon the body of a girl with puncture marks on her neck, clutching a lock of hair that suspiciously resembles Libby's. Someone is replicating New Orleans' most brutal supernatural killings. Mina must discover the truth and prove her sister's innocence before she becomes the victim of another myth. How freaking fun does that sound? And it says, it's a fun romp through 19s pop, 90s pop culture. Vampires, Buffy, The Crow, Need I Say More? And that's written by Dawn Katarjik. I don't know how to pronounce that surname, I do apologise. And even the back, like it looks like an old book, like with a peeling yellow sticker. Uh, it says, YA, suitable for fans of gothic YA murder mysteries. That sounds so much fun. And it's got like a VHS, like all these. I love it. I just love all the attention to detail. And even the little miniature cover of the book there. How cool is that? Awesome, I hope I love that one. Picked up another one, this sounded really strange to me and I don't, what is that? I don't exactly know what it's about but I feel like um, this Book of Sins talks about it and it's like creepy, eerie short stories. I might be incorrect there. I think it might be actually. Anyway, this is called The Dangers of Smoking in Bed by Marina Enriquez and this was actually shortlisted for the 2021 International Book Art Prize. So this is a really stunning, um, edition this is beautiful so it says a city thrums with murderous intentions family betrayals and morbid desires in this masterpiece of contemporary gothic welcome to buenos aires a place of nightmares and twisted imaginings imaginings where missing children come back from the dead and unearthed bones carry terrible curses these brilliant unsettling tales of revenge witchcraft oh fetishes disappearances and urban madness spill over the, with women and girls whose dark inclinations will lead them over the edge this sounds so eerie okay yeah i'm really excited for this one this sounds awesome hope i love it um then i also picked up this now i heard before so i heard a lot of good stuff for this and then one person i can't remember who it was now but one person whose reviews i really value didn't enjoy it so much so i was like oh i don't know how to feel now but i saw it and i thought let me just grab it anyway it's also signed by the author which is awesome and that is the wolf the den by elodie harper um i've got this beautiful edition a nice orange coloring and a lovely orange naked cover signed limited edition which looks really nice um so this one sounded really cool i've been as you can see by the next book i show as well and some recent hauls i've been slowly picking up more like mythology books because i, I don't know i love mythology and as you can tell like, i really like rick riordan and so i've been wanting over the last couple of years to really dive into more adult fiction um or adult retellings of mythology and stuff like that but i got really nervous because rick riordan was like the main one i loved and enjoyed you know so i didn't want it to kind of override that but i don't know why i had that thought in my head i've been enjoying myself so far um but yeah anyway so this was another one that i was interested in and it says sold by her mother enslaved in pompeii's brothel determined to survive her name is amara welcome to the wolf den Amara was once a beloved daughter until her father's death plunged her family into penury. Now she is a slave in Pompeii's infamous brothel, owned by a man she despises. Sharp, clever and resourceful, Amara is forced to hide her talents. For now, her only value lies in the desire she can stir in others. But Amara's spirit is far from broken. By day, she walks the streets with the wolf den's other women, finding comfort in the laughter and dreams they share. For the streets of Pompeii are alive with opportunity. Out here, even the lowest, lowest slave can secure a reversal in fortune. Amara has learnt that everything in this city has its price, but how much is her freedom going to cost her? Oh, and it's the first in the trilogy of novels that reimagines the lives of women who have long been overlooked. This sounds fabulous. I really hope I enjoy that. Ooh, very excited. And I also picked up Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. And again, someone I tend to go to for reviews had mixed feelings about this, but we've all got to make our own opinions, haven't we? So this is how this one looks. It's got a lovely blue cover. These kind of look similar to me, like they were um, 
posed beside each other and I was like, ah, they look nice together. But this has a really lovely spine, like naked spine. It's beautiful gold foil in there. Don't think this is signed, nah. Anyway, this one says, as princess of Crete and daughters of the fearsome King Monus. Minus? <laughs> Minus is what I meant to say. Ariadne and her sister Phaedra grow up here in the terrible bellows of the Minotaur from the labyrinth beneath the palace. The Minotaur, Minus's greatest shame and Ariadne's brother, demands blood every year. When Theseus, pr Prince of Athens, arrives in Crete as a sacrifice to the beast, Ariadne falls in love with him, but helping Theseus defeat the monster means betraying her family, and Ariadne knows that in a world ruled by mercurial gods, drawing their attention can cost you everything. Ariadne has heard too many tales of women being punished for the acts of men. She is determined to set her own fate. Will her decision to help Theseus ensure her happy ending? Or will she find herself sacrificed for her lover's ambition? This is just amazing. Like, I'm loving these authors coming out with mythologies that are focusing on the women. I'm just really loving that. I've got a few more. I've got like Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker and her uh, next book as well. I've got on Net Galley. Um, yeah, I'm just, these two, obviously, I think I have some more down here, but I might have moved them. Um, very excited, very intrigued to see where this goes. On to the Bernardo books now. So they had a lot of books, like really new books as well, that were just like for two pounds. But then I saw a couple of ARCs, and I swear you're not supposed to sell ARCs, like, that's illegal, isn't it? Or maybe not illegal, but it's just not in good faith. But however, it's a charity shop, so maybe it just is considered as like a donation towards them, like contribution. I don't know, like, I wonder what the the way is there. But anyway, this was priced, which is strange. Um, anyway, this is called, it says Hello Stranger, but it's called How to Welcome the World by Will Buckingham. Um, and this says, this book is about strangers. It's about the hope for newness that, that strangers bring with them and the fear of harm they provoke in us. It's about how when the world seems to be at its darkest, it can help to allow our homes and our worlds to breathe more deeply and to become porous. It sounded really cool. Um, oh, wow, okay. Amazing, so it's got a bit more detail in here. It says, we live in a world of strangers, a world we navigate according to a host of unwritten rules, rituals, and sometimes embarrassing attempts at politeness. But what if the strangers we encounter were not a problem, but a gift, an opportunity to open up our lives, cure the loneliness epidemic, and solve our great political crisis? When Will Buckingham's partner died, the shock of his grief told him to withdraw. Instead, he immersed himself in humanity's long and rich tradition of hosting and helping strangers, travelling the world in search of stories of guests and ghosts, migrants and neighbours. From a gentrifying city in Myanmar to a granny residence in Bulgaria and a divided community in Bal Sol Heath, Hello Stranger invites us to open the door and let the world in. Aww. That sounds awesome. I hope I love that. <clears throat> I also picked up this little hardback book by Jasmine Ward, and this is Navigate Your Stars. Um, and this one says, oh, it's actually about the author. Yeah, it's a stirring reflection on the value of hard work and the importance of respect for yourself and others. It's beautifully illustrated, um, and it's it will inspire all readers um, preparing for the next chapter in their lives. Oh, this sounds good. A tiny little book though. Absolutely did it. It kind of reminded me of my edition of The Little Prince. I think that's why I was drawn to it and I recognise the author's name. But look, look at all of that. I wasn't expecting like full colour. Amazing. Oh, Sing Unburied Sing. That's the one that instantly I would think of because I think I've got that as an e-book. Um, then I got another book here that seems to be a Manbroker Prize long-listed author. I don't know for what year. Probably 2021. When did this even come out? Because I don't... I think this is relatively new. 2020. Okay, okay. So this is Blue Ticket by Sophie McNosh. Um, and this says... This was really intriguing. Um, Carla knows how the lottery works. Everyone does. And I almost put it down after that because I was like, oh, I'm not really interested. However, I carried on. On the day of your first bleed, you report to the station to learn what kind of woman you'll be. <laughs> you right, Elsa? A white ticket grants you children. A blue ticket grants you freedom. 
you are relieved of the terrible burden of choice. And once you've taken your ticket, there is no going back. But what if your life, but what if the life you're given is the wrong one? Looking at this and reading the back kind of made me think of Only Ever Yours by Louise O'Neill, which I really, at the time of reading it, really disliked. Um, there was a lot in there that bothered me and annoyed me, and I don't know, I just really didn't get on with it. Um, so I'm wondering if this is something similar in that respect. Um, I'll be interested to see the, the themes and how, they, how they're explored. Right, last two books now. So I have here, these ones, I really like these like side pieces, which sounds weird, because I never really saw them before, only on like American books. So I don't know if these are imported ones or what, but this is If I Had Your Face by Francis Char. I've heard a lot of people going on about this um, and it sounded awesome. So I knew I wanted to read it eventually, but seeing it there for a really affordable price, I was like, let me get it. Um, yeah, so it looks like so. And it says, in Seoul, where impossible beauty standards are ruthless, social hierarchies dictate your every move, four women are balancing on a razor's edge. I might pronounce these names wrong, I do apologise. Puri, a beautiful room salon girl, paid to entertain wealthy businessmen after hours. Miho, an artist whose life becomes enmeshed with the offspring of the wealth, super wealthy elite. Ara, a hairstylist whose obsession with a K-pop star leads her to violent extremes. And Wona, their neighbour their neighbour pregnant with a child that she can't afford. Set in the drinking dens and beauty salons of South Korea's capital, If I Had Your Face is an electrifying debut novel about female strength, resilience and the solace that friendship can provide. Sounds awesome. Really hope I enjoy that one as well. I picked up, finally, Becoming by Michelle Obama. This is the one with the new introduction in it and again it's got another one of those weird side bits. Um, so yeah, this is her autobiography. I've been, it's one of those books I've been, I know I've been wanting to read anyway. I've just never got around to pick it up. But again, an awesome new edition. Like all these books were like brand new pretty much. Um, I'm wondering now if maybe Waterstones just didn't want them and they had a backlist and they just gave them. I don't know, because Waterstones is there as well. Um, yeah, so I've got it now. Excellent. I will pick this up eventually. It's probably going to be one that I dip in and out of. Um, we shall see we shall see i just found a load of little free bookmarks that were chucked into my bag how exciting these these booksellers are so stealthy like they're just chatting to you and they're giving you freebies and i didn't even know i feel bad because i didn't say proper thank you how sweet is that how sweet is that how adorable that one's a bit weird <laughs> anyway that is it for this video a long one i do apologize um, I hope you've enjoyed it though and as always let me know what you'd prioritise in reading if you've read any of these that you really think I'd enjoy let me know um, if you want to read these if they're on your TBR also let me know and anything else how's your day going let me know that too anyway I will catch you in the next video bye